Welcome to Winter Golf. This is a physics-based puzzle game that claims to be a sports game, even though it's really not. In this game, you are controlling a snowball, and you have to collect all of the snowflakes in each level in order to unlock the exit to that level. And because the game is vaguely themed around golf, the objective is to try and get a hole-in-one on every single level. So in other words, you have to line up your shot perfectly so that your snowball ends up collecting all of the snowflakes and it just rolls into the hole. Which is not actually that difficult, just so you know. I've actually already beat this entire game off screen because there's only five levels. And to be quite honest, the levels are not particularly challenging, although considering that this game was initially made for a game jam, I can kind of forget give it. Yeah, so this game was originally made for a game jam called the Pico 8 Advent Calendar, which was, I believe, a Christmas-themed game jam that was held quite a few years ago now, because Winter Golf originally came out in 2018, so this is not a new game at all. Part of the reason why I'm playing this today is because winter is fast approaching. I know it is still technically November at the time I'm recording this video, but... I mean, it, it, we're close enough to winter now that it would be appropriate to play this, right? Right? But there is another reason, and I would argue a much bigger reason, why I am playing this game today. You know how I was complaining in my previous video, the Recce video specifically, about how I'm seemingly incapable nowadays of making shorter videos, because it kind of feels like nowadays all of my videos are like over an hour long, or even longer than that in some cases? And I mean, even the Recce video in which I was complaining about that, that video still ended up being about 51 minutes in length when I finished editing it. Well, just for this one time only, I guess kind of as a throwback to some of my older videos from like 2016, 2017, I am going to be playing an extremely tiny browser game that only takes like maybe 5 minutes at most to beat. I'm going to explain the general mechanics of the game, I'm going to show you all 5 levels and how to get hole-in-ones in all 5 of the levels, because I was able to do that off-screen. And once I'm through with all that, I'm just going to leave the video right then and there. I was originally going to include this in a double feature video, considering how small this game is, but... If I turned this into a double feature, though, the video would probably wind up being about 30 to 40 minutes long, if I had to guess, and that's still way too damn long for my liking, so... I'm gonna do a standalone video on this game, and yes, I do fully admit that this is kind of a filler video. There is gonna be a much more substantial video coming after this, and I do believe that video is also going to be a walkthrough, but it's gonna be a walkthrough through of a much larger game, and as a result, it's probably gonna be over an hour long again. But given how much content there is in that game, I feel like it is actually justified for once. And yes, just for the record, I've already decided on which game I'm gonna be recording next after this, and my estimate is that you'll probably be seeing that video within maybe the next three to four days or so, so be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, though, let's go and play some Winter Golf very quickly, so we press the Z key in order to to get to the level select screen here. Yeah, as you can see, I've got hole-in-ones on every single level already, but I am going to try and do it again just to show you guys, like, how the game functions. So, the controls in this game are very simple. You have a little arrow right here that is actually your snowball right there that you are controlling. So, this little arrow is showing you which direction you're firing your snowball towards. You can aim it pretty much anywhere you want, and you are trying to get the snowflakes here. When you collect a snowflake, it will cause your snowball to increase in size, which does affect the physics of the ball. It does cause it to move a lot slower. But since all of these levels can be completed in just one shot, that might not matter to us all that much, actually. So you can press and hold Z to apply different amounts of power to your shot as well. I don't exactly know like how uh, okay I definitely hit that way too hard but yeah you can see like how exactly uh, you know you can see how exactly the physics function in this game and your snowball does get a lot larger with the more snowflakes that you collect here but I do believe that there is a specific way yeah you can also hold the X key to reset as well just reset the entire level so I think there is a very specific way that we want to go about doing this oh I almost got that other snowflake here so I think 
how I how I solved this level before is that we want to hit the snowball over to the right. Yeah, we need to uh, we need to make it so that it doesn't completely make a full circle around this map right here. Because I think we want to make it fall off around yeah around that top right corner so that it falls into that snowflake in the center, and then it's able to bounce up the other slope on the other side so that way well not like that because we just flew right over it, but we want to make it bounce back into the snowflake on the left side. So I think we do- it, it's something along the lines of this. Oh god, okay, I'm not getting a good enough bounce though. Hang on a second. I do want to mention as well that the hole only gets unlocked whenever you collect all the snowflakes in the level. So unless you manage to get all the snowflakes, then the levels are quite literally unbeatable. <laughs> Maybe I'm putting too much power on this. Let's see here. Okay, no, I'm definitely putting too much power on this. It's just like barely flying over the other snowflake here. Hang on a second. I was able to figure this out before. Okay, let's see if we can try applying like slightly less power power here. Like, I don't know, is this... Okay, that's apparently not good either. Well, I mean, it does bounce up to the other side, but I still need to get the snowflake that's, that's like, hovering in the air. Well, I feel like hitting the snowball to the left may also work as well, but since we're, like, aiming directly at a slope, we'd have to really take the power down just a little bit. Oh god, yeah, that's really gonna need to apply, like, maybe only half power to that. There we go. I think it's gonna roll right in. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so that's that's how you can do the the hole in one for that level at least. So I did discover that you can also do that by shooting the ball to the left as well, but it's very difficult for the ball to not bounce directly over the hole if you're shooting it from like left to right after it gets the last snowflake. Yeah, so I do feel like it is a lot more efficient to just shoot it to the right. I I did eventually get it. My God. It took me way more tries than I care to admit. Weirdly enough, the first level in the game is the hardest to actually try and get the hole-in-one on. At least I feel it is. The other ones are not so tricky. Not exactly. So I mean, something kind of funny that I could actually show off in this level in particular is that... Yeah, you can actually shoot the ball off the screen and it doesn't come back. It just leaves, completely. Yeah, it's possible to shoot the ball out of the map in this level at the very least. I don't think it's possible to do that in the other levels, but if that happens, you are gonna need to reset. So I think the, the trick to this level right here is that you wanna try and bounce the ball off of this wall right here. Yeah, because then, yeah, it, if you time it just right, it'll fly out, and it just kind of rolls down, and yeah, you just get a hole in one. It just picks up all the snowflakes while it's tumbling down, and if it doesn't hit this little ceiling up here near the bottom of the level, then it should just roll into the hole. So that's one level where you kind of have to do a bit, of a, a bit of a trick shot, but again, it's not really all that challenging. So this third level right here, I think... Oh, well, I mean, you can... you can. Oh, actually, no, this is another level that where you can hit the ball out of the map. Okay, I forgot that's actually like a... There's there's not even a ceiling there. Okay, but no, what you, what you actually need to do is that... Yeah, you need to try and hit the ball towards... Oh, actually, wait a second. How are you gonna... How do you get it to bounce to that other snowflake near the end? Well, I think you have to... you have to hit it near that slope, yeah, for sure. Oh, I guess because you have to get enough... you have to be getting enough speed in order to make it bounce up there. Okay, wait a second. This one's a little bit trickier than I remember it being. Yeah, you need to try and build up momentum across these slopes here, I think. Okay, so... what if... well, actually, hang on, be, before we reset... okay, no, that's still not enough momentum. Do I need to hit this, like, with full power directly at the slope? Oh, okay, yeah, that's actually what we're supposed to do. There we go was not hitting it hard enough. That was the issue. Okay, can't make like little tiny baby shots here, okay? You just need to- you need to hit that bastard into the stratosphere. That's what you gotta do, okay? It's just like- it's just like real golf, right? Just like in real golf. <laughs> okay, I think you have to do like mostly the same thing here. Oh, that's- no, that's not it at all. That is definitely not it whatsoever. Hang on a second. But I think the idea itself is similar. The execution, I am completely botching at the moment. Hang on. Maybe I need to hit this all the way to... Do I need to, like, flatten this? Yeah, I need to get this, like, perfectly flat, I think. There we go. That works. 
That definitely works. I think I had to shoot it like perfectly flat or almost perfectly flat. There we go, to get it over that slope, get enough momentum. And then this final level over here, yeah, we're already at the end of the game, guys, just for the record. Okay, so there is like uh, these little bars right here that do kind of act as a platform. So I think the gimmick for this one is that you have to try and somehow shoot the ball in between those bars, because I know that you can, in fact, do that. Gotta try and get it to fly up that slope over there. Okay, that's... no, hang on. I think we need to save that snowflake for, for the last one. Or maybe we don't. Can we just hit it through the center? Well, I mean, we can, but can we angle it in such a way that it actually, like, doesn't collide with the other one on the side? Because I do want this to fly all the way to that other slope there, so it can come back down and just grab all the other snowflakes. Let's see if I can do it, because that's definitely, like, one strategy to beating this level. Okay, well, I mean, we can we can just miss the snowflakes altogether. Yep, tried and true pro gamer strategy right there. Okay, actually, that was, that was a little bit better, but I did end up missing one. Hang on, we almost got it there. Almost. Okay, actually, it seems like hitting it through the center could potentially work as well, because... Yeah, if I can just not get it to, to bounce right there off that wall. Hit it at, like, full speed. Okay, yeah, there we go. Just like that. Or not. It's... How in the frick? Why in the world did it get stuck right there? Excuse me? No, that's not... That's not how physics is supposed to work. Hold on a minute. That seems a little bit wonky to me. No. That just seems a little bit weird. I feel like I was cheated out of that. Oh my god, I was cheated out of it again, are you kidding me? Okay, wait a second, what What in the world are we doing here? What in the world are we doing? That looks like it should work. How did I manage to get myself in that situation twice? Hang on a minute. Here we go. Here we don't go, because that went a lot slower than I thought it would. I, I want to make it clear as well, by the way, that I am not trying to brute force this. Okay, so it seems like if I, if I just hit the ball like that, I get the exact same result every time, where it just bounces... It, like, bounces around the hole, and then it comes to a stop, like, right on the edge of the hole. That's so strange that I don't think that's how it works in real life. Especially with a ball that big. Okay, fine, maybe I need to do the other strategy then, where I, I just hit it through the one of the bars on the side. Like, like this? Okay, maybe not, because I just, I just end up missing them again. Okay, I'm really starting to wonder how I got hole-in-ones on any of these levels, actually, because I've completely forgotten how I did this already. And I played this game just, like, a half hour ago, before recording this. Already I've forgotten, like, every single strategy here. Uh, I see. It's my, it's my complete incompetence that's gonna get this video over a half hour long. That's- that's what it is. Now I see what the crux of the issue is with my videos. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. I think I did it a little better. Oh my god, I did it- I did the same thing! What is going on? Okay, so I guess the physics in this game are actually a lot more predictable than I'm- than I'm, like, thinking that they are, because it seems like... Dude, I did that, like, four times in a row already. Okay, so, it seems like the physics in this game are not completely random, then, because if you hit the ball in, in the same direction with the same power, you get literally the same result every single time. So, this is, like, it's incredibly strange how I'm not able to get this down all of a sudden, because I didn't even see that happen before off-screen. I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. Almost seems like that was done intentionally just to troll players, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. Oh, wait a second. I wasn't doing that right. Okay, no. That was my fault. I wasn't doing that right. So, what I had to do was that- Oh, yeah, there's actually another, like, tiny slope in the starting area. Okay, no. I just remembered how to do that, actually. I need to hit that other little slope on the right side so that it goes upwards and then it, like- yeah, it goes up and, and around. Yeah, it hits the slope at the very top and then it, like, goes around and then comes back down and just collects everything. Okay. Well, either way, I mean, we, we got it regardless. Alright, well, I guess my short-term memory issues are what's gonna cause this video to become way longer than it rightfully should, but either way, that that is, like, the entire game, guys. We beat the entire game. Then it says, hold X for your prize. The prize is just a snow globe that you can shake around by holding down the X key. And it doesn't really do anything else. I mean, you can, you know, obviously cause the snowflakes to fly around the screen. If you just leave the snow globe alone, 
they will all just kind of float down to the ground. And once they all hit the ground, you can then shake again, and they all just fly back up again. So, yeah, just, it's a snow globe. I mean, that's the only real purpose of a snow globe at the end of the day. Yeah, you just shake it, and there's a bunch of snow that flies around. That's about it. <laughs> Still, nice little uh, interactive object that you can mess around with when you 100% the game, so it's pretty neat still. Actually, I could also reset this just to show this off. This is a neat little, uh, neat little animation right here as well, yeah. So you can see that this was made for the Pico 8 Advent Calendar uh, Game Jam. And I think the reason why the present says number 3 on it is because this is meant to be the third game created for the Advent Calendar, or I guess... I guess there's supposed to be about 24 or 25 games that were made for this game jam, and maybe you're supposed to play Winter Golf as the third game? And I guess that would make sense as well, because this game was published on December 3rd of 2018. And actually, maybe that also implies that all of the games that were made for this game jam were not actually available to play immediately. Maybe you had to wait for, like, the specific days on which they would unlock before you were able to play them, which does sound like a pretty neat idea for a game jam, though. Although I imagine that whoever's organizing the game jam would have to manually select which games to be featured in the advent calendar, and that the game's developers would have to wait until very specific days on the advent calendar before they can make their games publicly available. But again, it's still, it's still a pretty cool idea. But aside from all that, yeah, that's Winter Golf. That's the entire game. Those are all the hole-in-ones that you can get in the game. Again, the game is not particularly challenging, although it can be kind of tricky at times to figure out how to get the hole-in-ones in particular, especially since the game is completely physics-based. It seems like the physics in this game are a lot more predictable than I was led to believe, though, because it seems like if you hit your ball with a specific power in a specific direction all the time, then you actually end up getting the exact same outcome every single time, because I was somehow able to get my ball to balance on the side of the hole like four times in a row in the last level. And I had no idea that was a thing you could even do, and I also had no idea that there was a way to do that consistently, so... That was the only thing I found kind of strange about this, but yeah, it's still a pretty neat game overall. I think the whole idea of collecting objects in a level, but your ball grows larger as you collect more objects, is an interesting idea for a golf game. It certainly felt like this game was more of a tech demo than anything else. It feels like one of those games that's just meant to show off a singular idea, and how that idea could be applied to gameplay. It doesn't feel like this was ever meant to be a fully fleshed out game, which, again, it was made for a game jam, so I'm pretty sure... Like, I think it's pretty obvious that it never was meant to be a full game. But still, the concept itself is pretty innovative, and if you want to go check it out, I will provide a link in the description. This game is only available on Itch, and you also can't download this game either. You can only play it within your browser, so just keep that in mind. And that's where I'm gonna leave the video, because I feel like I really should stop talking now if I really want to try and get this video to go under a half hour. Like, that's my goal with this video at the very least. I promise that there will be a much more substantial video coming out after this. I've already decided on what I am going to be recording next, and I'm not going to mention that game by name just yet, but it is one of those kinds of games that I feel would be very daunting to do blind, just considering, like, how many mechanics are tacked on to this thing. Yeah, there's a lot of mechanics to explain, a lot of moving parts, I guess you could say. Is that even the appropriate term? I really don't even know. The point I'm trying to make is that I feel like it would be very difficult to do that game blind, so I'm gonna do it as a walkthrough video instead. You'll likely be seeing that video within the next few days, perhaps. It could possibly be the first video of December. But until then, thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later! <laughs>